Welcome to ZCast, everyone. I'm ZS Caraval from ZK Research, and I'm here in Atlanta at uh, Major League Baseball All Star Week. Uh, we just finished our uh, annual CI event here with David Coleman. Uh, wireless guru, is that a good title here? Uh, guru, yeah. ninja, something like that. Yeah, yeah. Well, you're, you're the Wi Fi guy when I think I'm the Wi Fi yeah. guy in the office of the CTO. Yeah. And uh, I did want to catch up with you. Obviously, um, almost all the attendees here are extreme wireless customers. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, Wi Fi is kind of an interesting, it's an interesting place uh, right now because we've had uh, 6E out for a while, mm -hmm. uh, Wi Fi 7. So it's the first time, it's the first real major change we've had in Wi-Fi in maybe since the lighting up with a five gigahertz spectrum, right? So, um, yeah. yeah. So, so, you know, Wi-Fi, it comes in these waves of every, uh, there's a new generation every three to four years, and it's usually new techno features, right? Yeah. Um, new speeds and feeds, and, um, but honestly, uh, to your point, it, this has been, the last four or five years has been more about a, a spectrum upgrade. Um, and with the availability starting with Wi-Fi 6E of the six gigahertz band. And uh, you're correct, um, that's actually, um, it's been a long time since we've got new spectrum. Uh, the last time was like in about 2001 when we five gigahertz yeah. was introduced um, for Wi-Fi. Um, and then 2.4 hung around for a long time. Forever, yeah. you know. But it's still around. It's yeah. still around, now yeah. it's a best effort band. Yeah. It's for legacy devices and IoT now. It's not for really yeah. for your inter your mission critical applications, so. Yeah, I know with, when uh, early on with six gigahertz, there was a lot of, you know, do we need it, do we not? Mm -hmm. There wasn't that many devices. Uh, where are we in the device spectrum now? Yeah, well, the good news now is it's been five years since the FCC approved it for Wi-Fi and about four years now of products coming out. And um, I think we're now at one billion client devices worldwide now. Well, that's substantial. Yes, that's quite a bit. Yeah. Um, I think 80% of all Wi-Fi devices shipping, client devices shipping now have a six gigahertz radio in them. Um, it would be higher, except for certain regions like China, for example, where they still ship a lot of devices, there is no six gigahertz Wi-Fi. Yeah. So, um, so the, the, it's come uh, down market too. So initially, at least in the smartphones, it was only on high-end smartphones. Um, yes, yeah. But now it's come down to the mid-tier and even the, the value-tier smartphones. So like, I think a big part of it was Apple this past, uh, in 2024 in, uh, I think September came out with all their new model Wi-Fi 7 models, and they all had six gigahertz radios. So they, that, along with all the Androids, the Samsungs, the Google Pixels, and of course you have all of the laptops too, um, and yeah. MacBooks too, and w Windows devices. So it's it's becoming prevalent now. It's kind of hard not to buy something that doesn't have a six gigahertz radio in it. And is the benefit really speed, or is there other are there other benefits too? Uh, well, speed's part of it, but speed's always overrated, you know, and to me is that you have a whole chunk of spectrum that's double what we've had before, so you can have more creative channel plans, you have to, it's, it's less interference, um, there's no backward compatibility issues, so you don't have to worry about having to support legacy devices on it, because it's so brand new, and it's pretty pristine spectrum, so it, a lot of the smarter enterprises are figuring out, hey, you know what? Some of our more mission critical applications will be better served on six gigahertz. Nothing wrong with five gigahertz. Yeah. As I said, 2.4 is best effort. Five gigahertz is gonna be around and a big part of the enterprise for a long time, but six gigahertz is the future. And you know, I've been talking, you know, I've been talking about this for five years, but I, I still like think that we're still just, just beginning with what we could do with it. So. Yeah. Yeah, and I think it's in some ways it's helped squash the old 5G is going to eradicate Wi-Fi. Yeah, thing. so yeah, especially the, you know, you hear that from different angles. Is the public 5G, but usually in that conversation is private, private 5G, 5G yeah. and where a lot of people say, oh, it's going to squash Wi-Fi, and didn't happen. Yeah. It's not going to happen. Yeah, the, the technologies are... Nothing wrong with private 5G and it has its place, but it's kind of niche right now, more some manufacturing environments and also outdoors, but the technologies really aren't competitive except for in a very narrow space. Yeah, so. yeah. Well, and even, this, I think one of the topics we talked about here was high, high density Wi-Fi mm -hmm. and the importance of that. And I think, um, you know, for a while people said if you had good Wi-Fi, that was good enough, but 
then I talked to some of the stadium operators and things, and not everyone's got a DAS from every carrier. So right. you, you got to worry about them. You got people coming over internationally, right? What do you do with them? Right. And so there's always need for Wi-Fi. Well, uh, I mean, just look at this event. We've had a lot of um, um, sports teams, CIOs, and they, and they have these big stadium venues. And now you're talking about 50,000 people in one place. So, or 150 for or, like NASCAR. Or 150, right. yeah, like yeah. Daytona, for yeah. example, which is a customer of Extreme. So designing, that's a, I don't even call that high density, I call that very high density. And so designing for being able to hand the kind of applications and data that flows through a high, very high density network like that is not easy. Um, so, but Wi-Fi so, can handle it if it's designed properly. So what do you do that others don't? And, I, I've called Extreme the king of complicated Wi-Fi, and um, by and large, there's very few problems with Extreme deployments. I don't think your tech is better. I mean, some of your product people might disagree. Well, I you, think but, our tech yeah, is yeah, better, yeah. But, <laughs> but but not <laughs> so much better, right? right. And, but so why are you able to handle the Fenway Parks and Lambeau Fields and Daytona? I think know. it's a multitude of things. First of all, Extreme made a commitment um, actually before I joined the company about 13 years ago to. Uh, cater to uh, large public venues. And uh, so they built a whole team uh, to work with these potential customers, future customers, as well as existing customers, starting in the front end of the sales cycle, during the design, the deployment, and even post-deployment. Um, and so it's been a long journey, and having that team that works with the leagues uh, building all these league partnerships that we've built up over the years, both especially here in North America, um, just about every major sports league. Um, and then another differentiator is actually just a hardware differentiator, believe it or not, for many years uh, our under CDAP with uh, having the weatherized capabilities yeah, yeah. and also our directionals. Um, the NEMA enclosure being part of the form factor and not having to buy a third party device and, and stick it in there. so. That, that's made things easier in terms of the sales cycle, uh, cost, um, and it's just been very, very popular. But I, I, I got to really hand it to our stadium team because you, you made the point, at the end of the day, Wi-Fi is Wi-Fi. Um, so sometimes you really have to differentiate with your relationships and, um, and how you work with the customers and partners from, from the very beginning to the end. All right, well, uh, let's look ahead now. Okay. Uh, so we got. 6E, we got seven. What's coming for Wi-Fi when, when you think of okay. Wi-Fi 2030? Well, first, where are we going? Uh, if I could just go back a little bit to Wi-Fi 7 just for a second, sure. because I still get asked, should I get Wi-Fi 6E or Wi-Fi 7? So I think we've discussed this before. I consider them the same generation. I don't even like to, I just say six gigahertz. So the main feature of Wi-Fi 7, in my mind, is that it has a six gigahertz radio in it. And it's going to br continue that um, story of six gigahertz mobility and um, connectivity. There, yeah, there's a few new things in it, like multi-link operation. But yeah, those technologies are going to take some time to be more field tested and fully baked. Yeah. So Wi-Fi 8 will turn out. Wi-Fi 8. <laughs> so let's talk about the future. So um, the future, there's a couple of things. So we'll go ahead and talk about Wi-Fi 8 first. And then I have, if you don't mind, a couple other things. Sure. But, Wi-Fi 8, um, believe it or not, it's coming sooner than you think, okay? Um, it's based on 802.11bn for ultra high reliability. And that's what it's all gonna be about, trying to get to like six nines of reliability. And also, uh, the other big metric you're gonna hear about is all about latency, okay? Trying to get it down to sub um, uh, five microse um, microseconds. So, starting to hear like carrier grade kind of numbers yeah. that you always hear with 5G now talked about. And the main techno feature behind it is something called multi-AP coordination. So imagine a Wi-Fi 8 smartphone connecting to two to four APs at the same time, or those two to four APs are coordinating with each other <laughs> on how they're gonna communicate. Without getting too techno geeky, there's four different kinds of it, but um, you know, if all this works out, it has serious implications in terms of redundant data for reliability, but also think about roaming and latency. Yeah. So if I was connected to an AP in this room and the AP in the other room, that's really 
if you move between APs, you're actually still connected to the same, to, it's like you're connected to two or three APs at the same time. Now, will all this work? Um, this is some pretty serious stuff, and quite frankly, I think some of these capabilities and features are going to need some heavy processing power, which kind of brings me to what has me more excited than Wi-Fi 8, and that is, is that you're going to start seeing edge compute find their way into not just switches, but also APs in the next three to five years. So think about putting a neuroprocessor right there in an AP. Um, that could be used for a lot of different things. One is to maybe get some of these new Wi-Fi 8 features to do the calculations for them, but there's so much more you could do. You could run LLMs on there. I think we had a private discussion about even using a distributed compute platform yeah. on, the, on the edge. So, I mean, I mean, I could go on and talk about that for an hour. That actually has me more excited than anything about the, the endless possibilities on how we might be able to use those kind of processes. So that's a big shift for the wireless industry. I know, you know, your former company, Arrowhive, mm -hmm. we were talking to your, uh, when Joel Vincent was there, just about the AP, the vision was the AP would become a, become a commodity almost. Right. And then you'd figure out how to charge for the analytics and things like that. But right. now, we've kind of gone full circle where the AP now has a lot of the value itself and not an AP isn't an AP isn't an AP anymore, right? Well, it's gonna, exactly. So yeah. I think what I told this group here is I think in the future that will, your infrastructure will actually become part of the, the platform for the customers building their own analytics platform as well. They're gonna have a whole distributed edge compute that will be in, in APs and switches that we'll not only use for enhancing the network, but that customers in the future might be able to run their own applications and uh, AI LLM capabilities for their own needs and, re and reasons. So it might even transform your network, not just as a, uh, a connectivity um, um, gateway, but also, and mobility um, gateway, but also for um, a compute platform for all our customers, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. So. All right, anything else exciting you about Wi-Fi? Uh, a couple things that, um, so something that I'm, inter there's two things, a couple other things that we're interested in. Um, there's a technology called broadcast Wi-Fi. It's based on 8 or 2 11 BC, it's early days. But think about at any given place, there's always devices that are not connected to your Wi-Fi. So what, what if there was a way to push content to them, even though they don't even have an IP address? Think broadcast yeah. traffic at layer two. Like multicast. Yeah, or multicast. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Broadcast and multicast. So, um, so this is being discussed where, um, and it'll probably take cooperation from either the OS and smartphones or apps, where you, you may be able to have as many as four channels that you could broadcast from your access point infrastructure down to these unassociated devices, including streaming video, um, emergency alerts, um, advertisements, it has all kinds of potential use cases. Um, the p sports teams are, are always interested in getting yeah. content out, but th that could apply to a lot of verticals. Now, I would like to give one little warning and caveat to it. Um, you know, if you're connected and you're providing content, you, you know that they're connected to your net network. One thing that they're going to have to worry about this technology they haven't fully figured out is the security aspect of it. Mm -hmm. So imagine if Zeus came in and had a rogue AP and started broadcasting out rogue content, right? So there's going to have to be a yeah. way to figure that out, and that's the kind of things that are under discussion right now. Yeah, that would be interesting. Yeah. 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 So, but um, so I'm. We're or having in, just rogue content broadcast to you without you wanting it. Right? Yeah. Well, I mean, it could be dangerous. I mean, too, potentially, right? You could so. Be, walking down the street and who knows what's being pushed here, right? So, right, yeah. yeah, but so I, I think it has some interesting possibilities, but you also, there needs to be some control yeah. safeguards and guardrails put on it. Um, I'm also, maybe not so much for stadiums and large public venues, but um, I've been, for a couple of years, I've been interested in Wi-Fi sensing technology where David moves through a room, and me moving through the room changes the, R the movement of the RF, and that can be, um, we can use what is called channel state information to detect that movement. So let me tell you how the consumer grade companies are already using it. They're, David falls down, it sends a, 
message to an app that says, go pick up David, he fell down. There are also the consumer grade vendors that are also working with uh, the ISPs are partnering up with like uh, the ADTs and the other security, uh, home security companies, yeah. that if somebody breaks into your house, you detect that movement and you can set an alarm. So I think there's applications in healthcare. <laughs> um, we, you can, I think it's- Well, healthcare would be obvious, right? Yeah, yeah, well, you know, like think Alzheimer's patients yep. that are might moving or the technology is even is, might even be accurate enough to detect if somebody's breathing or not. Yeah. Um, but I um, hadn't figured out yet how to put that in the stadiums because it, with large groups of people, it's not going to work. It could detect, like, I was thinking like the wave. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> maybe, maybe you could tie some sort of app when they're doing the waves in the stadium. Yeah. So I haven't quite figured that one out yet. But we're, we're, inter we're interested in it as a possible enterprise technology in the future. Um, the other thing I would mention is the sub gigahertz Wi-Fi, the Wi-Fi halo stuff. Um, no enterprise vendor has made a play in it yet, uh, but it's intriguing. Uh, because of the uh, range possibilities of up to a couple of kilometers. Yeah. And also, uh, it could be a really good IoT sensor capability for Wi-Fi, because you can literally have thousands of devices connected to one AP. The problem with that is, for the enterprise vendors, is they got to figure out how to monetize that, because if we're only selling one AP and 5,000 devices are connecting to it, yeah. and the customer only buys three APs, it's, how do you monetize well, that? Well, when it so, comes to IoT connectivity, there's so many of them. Yeah, right? like, and th that's the other everything. problem. There's competing yeah. technologies, But right? if there's a way to standardize that on, on Wi-Fi versus LoRaWAN or something. Like, exactly. Like, there'd be and, a lot of benefits to that. And then put it all on one platform. Yeah. So um, that, that ecosystem is growing, so we're keeping our eye on that. But uh, and, you know, we'll see if the enterprise vendors are going to make a play in it yet. But um, we're definitely keeping our eye on that as well. All right, well, we've got 6 gigahertz. Wi-Fi 8's coming, and a bunch of other cool things that might happen. Is that right? Yeah, it's, a, it's an exciting <laughs> yeah. time. Yeah. 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 All right, anything else you want to add? Uh, I think the only other thing I'd add, sustainability. Oh, yeah, it always right. comes up to, and that's um, a hot topic, especially in Europe. Yeah. Okay, we keep building bigger APs that mean more and more power. Now we're going to put neuroprocessors in there. They're going to need even more power. We've got to figure out smarter ways that instead of just trying to conserve energy on these things to save battery life, but to save energy on APs and your infrastructure where APs go into pseudo sleep modes and yeah. when, people, when they're not being used. And, uh, yeah, that, there's been versions of that out there for quite some time. Static but versions, yeah. but it needs to be more dynamic. Yeah. And I think le you know, marrying that to AI might make it a little bit easier on how we can figure out downtimes yeah. and how to make better use of the access point. And by the way, not just AP infrastructure. Networking. I think some of these guys were talking about their HVAC systems yep. and lighting systems. So Well, we live in a world where everything's connected, so it there's no certainly why, is. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a fun time to be, to be in yeah. this industry. Same. So. All right, David, well, always appreciate the time. Always my pleasure. So on behalf of David Coleman, wireless guru from Extreme, I'm Zia Skira of from ZK Research, and thanks for watching. Uh, give us a like and hit that subscribe button. I'll see you next time on my next episode of ZCast.